Given two circles, one inside the other, we place between them a ring of circles. Beginning anywhere, the first circle touches the two given circles. And each new circle touches the preceding one and the two given circles. The ring may close, the last circle touching the first. The ring may not close. If we begin with two concentric circles, we see that the ring closes only if the radii of the concentric circles satisfy a certain relationship. The outcome is independent of the position of the first circle of the ring. Different initial circles lead to rings which are congruent by rotation. Thus, if one ring closes, then every ring closes. Can a similar statement be made when the given circles are not concentric? That is, if one ring closes, does every ring close? however we choose the initial circle? This appears to be a difficult question, but there is a geometrical mapping which enables us to transform the difficult non-concentric case into the simpler concentric case. This mapping is called inversion. Inversion is a mapping determined by a fixed circle. Its center is called the center of inversion. For any point P other than this center, there is on line OP a unique image point P prime, located so that the length OP times the length OP prime equals the square of the radius of the circle. P is also the image of P prime. Each of these points is called the inverse of the other. They are related by a simple geometric construction. If a point moves on a line through the center of inversion, the inverse point moves on the line also. Points on the circle of inversion are invariant. They are mapped onto themselves. As a point approaches the center, its inverse recedes toward infinity. If a point moves on a line not through the center of inversion, its inverse moves on a circle through the center of inversion. Therefore, as a point moves on a circle through the center, its inverse traces a line not through the center. As a point moves around a circle, not through the center, its inverse traces a circle 
called the inverse circle. If a circle intersects the circle of inversion, so does its image, and in the same points. For the points of the circle of inversion are invariant. We note again that the inverse of a circle through the center of inversion is a line. A circle orthogonal to the circle of inversion, that is, one which cuts the circle of inversion at right angles, is its own inverse. Inversion is a conformal mapping. The angle between two curves is congruent to the angle between their inverses. Tangent circles invert into tangent circles. With this knowledge of inversion, we now return to our problem of the ring of touching circles and show how to invert two non-intersecting circles into two concentric circles. Given two non-intersecting circles, we choose any circle orthogonal to both. Let this circle intersect the line of centers in the points U and V. An inversion in any circle whose center is at one of these points, say V, maps the given pair of circles into a pair of concentric circles. With center U prime, where U prime is the inverse of U. To see this, we first note that the line UV is the line of centers of the inverted circles, as well as the line of centers of the original circles. Moreover, with V as the center of inversion, a circle through V and U inverts into a line through U prime and this line, which is distinct from UV, also cuts both inverted circles orthogonally. The only line which cuts a circle orthogonally is a line through its center. Each inverted circle is cut orthogonally by two distinct lines through U prime. Hence, U prime is the common center of both inverted circles. Our two non-concentric circles, one inside the other, have now been inverted into two concentric circles. To recapitulate, we chose a circle orthogonal to the two non-concentric circles cutting the line of centers at U and V. The inverse of this circle with respect to center V is a line meeting UV in U prime. This line cuts the inverse of each of the given circles orthogonally. This line therefore passes through the center of each inverted circle, but the centers of the inverted circles lie on UV, and two distinct non-parallel lines meet in one point. Therefore, U prime is the center of both inverted circles. Hence, we can say that if a ring of circles touching two non-concentric circles, closes, 
it will do so however we begin to construct the ring. Since this statement is true for concentric circles. Since this ring closes, then every ring closes for these two non-concentric circles. This is just one of the many properties of lines and circles, difficult to prove by ordinary methods, which becomes simpler after a suitable transformation by inversion. Thank you.